Now, the drive from Beirut is about three and a half hours, and we pass by this mountain, which is called Mount Hermon, which according to the Bible is where the fallen angels, or the Nephilim, landed on earth. And this is at the quarry itself. You can see the vertical surfaces of limestone, where a lot of stone has been removed. And here again, in slightly more detail, you can see uh, that very large blocks have been removed at one time. And this, so far, is the largest. It's called the Stone of the Pregnant Woman. Why it's called that, I have no idea. But it weighs in at between 1,200 and 1,500 tons and is still attached to the bedrock. Now, these photographs were taken about three years ago. We're returning in April 2019 with high-definition 4K video cameras. Here I am with Yusuf Awiyan, who was a member of our group. Uh, we did this, I think, about three years ago. And this gives you a sense of scale of the so-called Stone of the Pregnant Woman. Notice that it uh, was under or it was being quarried and then suddenly work stopped there, which is quite mysterious. Is it possible that it was one of the victims of the Great Cataclysm of 12,000 years ago that affected other locations, such as Petrin, Jordan, and also the highlands of Peru and Bolivia, Egypt, Turkey, Easter Island, and other locations? So now we're getting a side view, and you can see again uh, the kind of technology that was being used to uh, shape this block. Uh, the, the marks are very similar to what we see on the Giza Plateau and also at Petra in Jordan. And it's just the sheer sense of scale of this. It's mind-boggling to see in photographs, but it's even more mind-boggling to see in person. Uh, the quarry itself is, I believe, about 50 to 100 acres in size. And recent excavations, which we'll see in April 2019, will expose even more. So again, huge. Notice the amount of uh, erosion on the surface. So it could very well be that this work was done several thousand years ago and not, as locals claim, something that the Romans did, because the Romans never took on a project of this scale. The fact that they don't know who did the work, uh, of course, what they do is they simply make up a story saying, well, the Romans once, uh, once occupied the area, so obviously they were the ones who did it, which is nonsensical. This is another stone in the quarry uh, that is separate from the bedrock, and it weighs in at approximately 1,000 tons. Again, you can see the weathered surfaces on the walls here where lots of different blocks have been removed over the course of time. And here in detail, the Romans likely tried to quarry this stone. You can see the cut marks in the surface uh, where they tried to break it up into sections. They did take a small piece out, but they basically tried to quarry it chop it up into, into smaller blocks, and gave up. So the Romans did not do the major megalithic work here. And again, just to show you that a lot of stone has been removed from this quarry, reasonably fine quality limestone here, and there's where you see the almost scratch-like claw marks, which are also typical on the Giza Plateau and at Petra in Jordan. And now we're at the main site of Baalbek itself, and this is called the Trilithon. Three 800 to 1,000 ton blocks lined up with very inferior work done on top by the Romans. So the Romans found a megalithic foundation, and then they decided to build their temple on top of it. The difference in scale is astonishing. And then here inside Baalbek itself, total destruction over the course of centuries by I have no idea who, but there are sections or segments of pink or rose granite, which are very curious because all of the other work, 
like these megalithic blocks are in limestone from the quarry, which is about one mile away. So again, you see a, the sense of scale. And these columns are very curious because here you can see on the right, they put some of them back together again. Originally, each one was one piece of granite. And our geologist, Susan Moore, believes that the granite itself may have come from Aswan, which I believe is a thousand miles away. You see the perfect surfaces. These are machine surfaces. But why are they all so broken up into small pieces? It's unlikely that somebody came and tried to break them up in order to make uh, small statues out of them. It looks like cataclysmic destruction. And that is what will be fascinating about going in April 2019 uh, in order to be able to see more. Because there's only so much you can observe when you go to a place once. But uh, repeated trips reveal much more information. So I'll be looking for scorched surfaces and other signs of possible cataclysmic damage. Now these blocks here are approximately 800 tons apiece. They're located inside one of the courtyards. And again, you can see these tool almost like claw marks, which again are indicative of other ancient megalithic sites. And here we have a very large block that you can see in the center of the uh, photograph. I did take video, but that was three or four years ago. Not as high definition as I have now, so going back in April will make a big difference. But see these huge column sections and perfectly flat surfaces. So the Romans could work uh, this material, but to get that level of precision, I don't think so. It looks to me like lost ancient high technology, which also, of course, was what was responsible for the creation of the granite columns, which again, were likely transported from Aswan, which is at the southernmost point of Egypt. And here, massive columns of multiple sections. It's possible that this work was done by the Romans, but the scale is so huge. And notice the, the strange weathering marks on the surfaces, whether that's just normal weathering or evidence of some kind of cataclysmic heat damage, as we see in Egypt at the megalithic sites, presently unknown. And that's why a return trip, of course, is vital once every year or two. So here again, sense of scale. There is um, <clears throat> David Lewis next to a huge block. Uh, there's my wife, Irene. Notice the small stairs. So the stairs were probably built by the Romans. But that megalithic block, there's no way they cut and moved that. And here again, another massive block. And we see these strange... Um, scratching tool marks that we also see in places like Petra in Jordan. Baalbek, a fabulous site to visit. I recommend that you go there if you happen to be in Egypt and you can join us in April 2019 at hiddenincatours.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. So these are upcoming tours at hiddenincatours.com.